And then after you run through the tea, you run to the end zone on the other side, and then you pray. I was curious what your prayer is. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, it's the same prayer every time. I'm a routine uh, type of guy, um, just praying over my family, thanking God for uh, safe travel, um, and then uh, praying over my brother as he had his game. Yes, um, well, last game we had his was earlier than mine, but um, sometimes if I'm playing earlier than him, then praying for his game and their safety. Um, then just just praying that that God touches my my mind, my hands, my feet, um, you know, to just go out there and, and do what he's blessed me uh, to do, to put on the show. I know it's early in the week, but from what you've studied at Georgia so far, what do they do well, an experienced secondary that has a lot of guys who have played in football? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they're, they're very coachable. Uh, as you can see, um, they match the scheme that, that has been at Georgia, um, you know, for years to come. Um, they play extremely hard, uh, fly to the ball, um, instinctive. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to going out there and competing at a high level. Pat? And I'm just curious what your uh, growth curve was coming into this offense uh, in terms of just skill set and then reads and everything else and, and how much fun I guess it is to be able to play in an offense where you're able to go deep as much as you are. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing for me was just understanding what the coaches wanted to accomplish and what plays. Um, being very decisive uh, in my decision making and communicating at a high level. Uh, the first things first, you got to communicate at a high level to make sure everybody's on the same page so that when we're moving fast, we can move efficiently as well. Um, and, and it's wonderful. Um, I just want to get the ball to the playmakers and let them do what they do. Uh, and, and that's my, my only job um, outside of being a great leader. Adam, and then you, you have been asked like the Heisman questions for several weeks. Um, Jalen Hyde is kind of in the spotlight now and getting a lot of pub, the Peyton Manning photo and Chad Johnson tweets and, and all this sort of stuff. Is there a benefit to the team and how the spotlight is shared, like how uh, different guys react to other guys getting the spotlight? I don't think there's, you know, anyone really trying to be in the spotlight, so to speak. We have a lot of humble guys on our team and a lot of selfless guys, and that's what has elevated our game from last year um, to this year, just knowing that, what we want to do every day is come in and do our job, make sure that everyone is doing their job so that we can get to our, our um, final goal. And then two quick things. Jalen mentioned in the post game that this is a roster that has guys that have been through a lot of adversity, that that's maybe part of what drives you guys. Do you agree with that and, and why is that? Yeah, I do agree with that. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of guys just, just have a lot of talent and have so much to prove and so much to show. Um, we have a lot of ambition as well. So, you know, going out there and playing with a chip on our shoulder day in and day out, we just feel like we always have something to prove. Um, and, and that just fuels us to go hard every day. And Coach Golish just talked about how this is a matchup offense. And you guys are so good at getting the right matchups and getting mm-hmm. guys open. How much of that is scheme pre-snap? How much is that you identifying it and then go into it. Yeah, I would say uh, 50-50. You know, just um, depending on the on the look we get in the play that's called. Um, you know, we never know uh, coming out. That's why we try to get a good good grip on it um, on the first drive. Make sure my eyes are in the right place. Make sure I'm communicating at a high level so that when we do get the matchups, we can take advantage of those. Asked uh, Jerome the question about your tempo and about the advantages that it creates for you. Um, from where you sit, he, he said that it fuels, fuels everyone's fire when you see the body language. From where you sit, are you, are you watching the defense to see body languages, to see when you're kind of, that, that's taking effect? Mm, when I can, yes, sir. Um, most of the time, you know, we're going so fast, I want to communicate and make sure that I get a look at the back end, make sure I get a look at, you know, the structure of the defense, not so much of their body language or how they're maneuvering through a play or how they're getting set up. Um, it's mostly just filling bodies, so to speak. Um, but it definitely, I can piggyback off what Jerome's saying. When we see someone, you know, getting tired and they're showing, their body language is showing that they're fatigued, uh, we just want to increase our tempo even more. So um, anytime we, we get that opportunity, we're going to take it. Yeah, Hendon, we've heard a lot of praise about your leadership. Just how do you feel you've evolved and grown in that area in the last couple of years? Um, I've grown just from 
from learning, learning experiences and, and being put in different situations, knowing how to build relationships and knowing how to, you know, talk to different individuals um, in a way that will help them or motivate them to um, get what we need done and help them throughout their job um, as they help me with my job. You know, it's a, it's a two-way um, road from being a leader and communicating at a high level. You have to understand where people are coming from in different situations. So just having an understanding of my teammates and the family here at Tennessee um, has helped me elevate my leadership process. And what happened in the final three quarters last year in that Georgia game? Did, was that them making plays? Was that y'all just being out of sorts? What, what happened there? Mm -hmm. I mean, they had playmakers, I would say that. Um, they had a lot of playmakers, but, um, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of uh, mental errors and um, physical as well, you know. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a tough game, but, yeah. Are, are there any, and for this year, have there, how many times have there been where you've genuinely been surprised how open somebody has been? Because it looks like there's a lot of throws in every game where you're having to just underthrow them just to make sure you don't overthrow them because they're so wide open downfield. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's, 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 it's like, wow, like, no way they left them wide open like that. But um, just, just me trying to get the ball to the playmakers is, is my biggest thing. Like I said before, um, they, may, they do a great job of getting open as well. Um, all of that is not just, you know, defenses being, having busts, it's them being playmakers and understanding where bodies are on the field or understanding, hey, this is a zone, let me sit in this zone, or hey, this is man, I can run by him. Um, <clears throat> and then going back to picking matchups, seeing that I have a, a matchup on Jalen Hyatt with a, um, a stand-up rush or an outside linebacker, all right, that's, that's a dream come true. And then what has Darnell done to, to be able to allow you all to be so successful mm -hmm. this season on offense, or how, how big of a role has he played in what you all have done? Yeah. He's been selfless, um, you know, moving from the left side to the right side, um, you know, in, incorporating J.J. and Mincy and, and helping them get acclimated to the offense um, in a timely manner has been amazing. He's been um, – he hasn't been very vocal, but the way that he moves and carries himself um, helps the team out a lot. He brings nothing but great energy and positive energy um, day in and day out. I remember uh, during the game, he was a little mad at me, but we hugged it out and uh, had a couple laughs. Because uh, I gave up a sack, but it's okay. I'm gonna take him out to eat. <laughs> and then going going back to your your leadership, Coach Hype was in here and said it, it, this off season you had to sort of get comfortable in your own skin. Obviously, a big part of leadership is learning other people. But when, when would you say you started feeling like you said, like he said comfortable in your own skin to where you could be mm -hmm. the kind of leader that you've been? Um, I would say last summer going into fall camp. Uh, just building that relationship with the guys here uh, and the coaching staff through that spring and just not being as vocal because I was a, a newer guy and I just wanted to show guys that I, I was going to work hard and that I was going to do what it takes in order, um, not just for me, but whatever I need to do for the team in order for us to win, I'll do it. Um, just making that the bottom line, like whatever it is for the team, I'll do it. Um, and then carrying on, I, I started to build confidence and they instill confidence in me um, as I try to do for them as well. Um, and that just translated to me uh, building my leadership on and on and on and up, to, up until this point. Yeah. Uh, Hendon, I want to ask about, uh, I guess, lessons learned from that last year's Georgia game and then how much of what you see from Georgia, Alabama, kind of applicable as far as what they do in the back seven? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, it all comes down to the guys that are out there being coachable. And as you can see, you know, they, they have some great coaches behind them um, and, and they play extremely hard. That's something that you can't teach. The, the effort and attitude and toughness that they bring to the game is, is immaculate. And, um, you know, that's what SEC football is about. This is the, the top brand of football. Um, it's one of the reasons why, why we came to the schools that we, that we chose. And um, that's what we want, we want to be in, being uh, top competitors. In, in the game of football. Um, but, you know, from a, from a scheme standpoint, they play a lot, a lot of similar things. Uh, they communicate the same way. Uh, so, you know, ex expecting to get certain looks from one school to the other is, is normal. 
Heupel says that this will be the healthiest you all have been this season, obviously being with Cedric Tillman coming back. He was obviously excited to be on the field. So for you all, what was it like having his presence there and especially the impact he'll have once he gets back to 100%? Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Um, you know, Ced has been here with us this whole time. He's been locked in mentally, uh, been a, a, a great leader to the receiver room and to the offense and uh, to the team as well, showing the team that just because he's hurt and, uh, you know, he wants to play – extremely bad he's still going to be here for the team and, and um, you know is a huge part of the support system while he was injured um, and, and then um, having him back was was even cooler I remember him running out into the field um, you know the first time returning to practice and I was like wow he's a little bigger than last time I saw him and I see him every day but it's just his presence on the field is immaculate um, you know throwing that jump ball to him and watching him go up there and take it off defenders heads it's a beautiful sight as a quarterback Thank you. Appreciate y'all.